My name is Marty Lee. I've been an outdoors person my whole life, and that's 50 plus years. And I've been, um, I was taught to hunt morels as a small child, so it's possible that I've been doing it for almost 50 years. I think that morel mushrooms are very special because um, they're very delicious to eat, um, number one, but number two, they're special because they only uh, come up uh, during a really small window early in the spring, usually three or four weeks uh, in the spring and the morels are, are gone. It gets too hot and, and they stop uh, fruiting. So you have a very limited uh, time frame to go out and find them and that makes them extra special. One of the things that I look for when I'm looking for likely places are little drainages like this with the hillside. There's a couple more right here. When you find one, you should always search really good. When you're out hunting for morels and you're looking, scanning the leaves, um, they're going to be very difficult to find. But when you find one, you should always stop, don't move, and look around because morels are gre gregarious. Uh, where there's one, there are typically more. Um, and where there is one, it implies that that's a spot where uh, they're more likely to be than other spots. The conditions that make one grow are going to make several of them grow in that particular area. I haven't seen any more yet. There may not be any more. But we'll check this area pretty good before we leave. This slope right here is perfect because it's south facing. It's going to warm up first in the spring and there's one right there behind your boot. I either cut them or pinch them. I don't pull them up because I don't want to deal with the dirt. There's, there's also some controversy among the morel enthusiasts, whether you should rip them out of the ground or cut them off or pinch them off. Uh, personally, I either cut them or pinch them. Um, I don't. The presumption is that if you rip them out of the ground, you're damaging the, the mycelium, the body of the mushroom that's going to provide you mushrooms year after year. You're damaging that under the ground. Uh, when you uh, rip out a mushroom by the roots, I don't necessarily, I personally don't feel that that's so important. Um, but what I don't like uh, about pulling them out of the ground is that if I leave that dirt on there and put it in my sack or my baskets, uh, I've got dirt in with my morels and it causes every, all the morels to get dirt on them and, I, and it just requires more cleaning when you get back to your kitchen. Morels have associations with lots of different trees. I would go to those trees that I know are, in general, hosts for morels. Elms, hackberries, cottonwoods, ashes. Uh, in east of I-35, uh, sycamores. In, in northeast Oklahoma, I focus my efforts mainly on sycamore trees. And I rarely find them elsewhere where there's not a sycamore tree. If you find one, there's gonna be a sycamore tree somewhere within 20 feet. This elm is damaged. You can see the bark peeling back here. It may just be this one limb. In particular, dying trees and or 
damaged trees because it's important to remember that the body of um, the morel mushroom actually lives under the ground in a web of mycelia. This entire area could be um, covered with morel mycelia and one of the things that mushroom mycelia feed off of is uh, those those dead and or excuse me those dying trees um, and that new that new source of, of nutrients and so the mushroom starts feeding on those those dying roots um, and um, consumes those roots and a lot of times with a, a particular dying tree maybe for a couple of years uh, the morels will fruit um, incredibly around that tree and I've found flushes of morels for a couple of, re of years around a particular tree uh, and then and then nothing they're gone now it's, it's very possible that the mycelia are still there in the ground um, but there's not enough nutrients to support the the fruiting of of the morel which is the part that we like to harvest and eat assuming we have plenty of rain and temperatures are warming up into the 60s and 70s during the day but it's probably most important that we have warm uh, nights. Uh, the average ground temperature when morels uh, start fruiting is uh, from 45 to 50 degrees and typically that uh, that's when they'll start fruiting. There are websites you can look uh, on the Oklahoma Mesonet and they will they have a graph of the entire state uh, with ground temperatures at each of their uh, polling stations. Here in Oklahoma, in southern Oklahoma, uh, morels can start um, as early as the middle of March um, and um, a couple of weeks later by the end of March, uh, first part of April here in central Oklahoma, they'll be coming on. Um, by the by mid-April in northern Oklahoma and and uh, on through April and May up through Kansas and and uh, continuing on up. Last year I found over a hundred right here in this little 10 yard by 10 yard clump of trees. These are little damaged elms and they were just in here thick. I'd never found them right here before, and there may not be any here this year either, but we'll have to check it. Really good. A lot of people that are new to morel mushroom hunting and, and ask me questions, you know, where, where should I go look? And, you know, my vague answer is, well, just go outside and start looking. They, they can theoretically be anywhere. Um, you can find them in your backyard. You can find them at the city park. Um, you can find them um, uh, at your, uh, near your favorite swimming hole. If you know of an area where a lot of trees have been damaged by a storm or, and could be tornado, high winds, or ice storms, and they will flush around those damaged trees. Typically not that year, but maybe the next year. Uh, same thing for a burn. If you have a friend or a colleague at work that you know uh, does it and, and has some experience and is willing to take you out and share their potentially secret spots with you, I, th I think that's the best way for someone to be introduced. Um, a, a person new to morel mushroom hunting could potentially wander around in the woods uh, for <laughs> two or three days without finding anything just because they may be unfamiliar with um, the particular kinds of habitats that morels like. 
Um, and someone with more experience can, can look at the landscape in the woods or near a creek and say, uh, right over there is potentially a good spot. I, I think if, if anyone is interested in getting out, the most important thing to remember is that it's great to get out uh, and enjoy nature and poke around in the woods. There's no telling what you may find. You may find uh, a shed white-tailed deer antler. You may find uh, a turtle that's just come out of hibernation. Uh, in the early spring, the plants are, are are budding and starting to grow. Flowers are going to be coming on in the woods. Uh, the insects and, and uh, animals are going to be coming alive. And uh, even if you don't find any mushrooms, uh, there's no telling what you might be able to enjoy in the outdoors.